What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. I'm Deja. I don't want to be too loud because my baby is asleep. Although he can sleep through anything because we really be yelling. I just thought that I would give you guys like a more in-depth video of my labor and delivery of what went on because I know I didn't really post that many like clips. Kind of like a different vibe this go around because it really wasn't like a labor because we had a scheduled C-section. I will get into all that but I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about like why we did a scheduled one, did anything happen, this and all that you know. So let me just hop straight into it and give y'all like a little story time of the day so boom back when i was probably like 20 something week and i was going to my ob that's when we started to discuss like why i had to have a c-section with layden and all this and all that so for those of you who don't know i've had a c-section with layden it was an emergency c-section my water did break but i only dilated to two centimeters within the 14 hours that i was in labor it was kind of like very traumatic but my water had broke i was only one centimeter by that time and i had been one centimeter for the past two weeks because they were checking me at my doctor's appointment with Layden. Talk about with Layden, okay? Yeah, I was one centimeter for two weeks. Then my water had broke with Layden. And then I was in labor for 14 hours unmedicated until they like ran in. Because I guess his oxygen level or heart rate, I forgot which one, maybe both, dropped dramatically. So like all these doctors ran in. They threw like this waiver in front of me. And on the waiver was like death and all this and all that. So it was just like very like, oh, we got to go right now. Come on, come on into the c-section that had happened i was like signing consent forms crying because i don't know why i thought like a c-section was like the worst thing in the world that's how like my sisters and them made me feel so i was like crying signing these letters and stuff like that and then um they take me to the back i'm scared as hell y'all because it was like as soon as we get into the operating room it was like 30 doctors it was so many people in there and they just had to like throw me on the table, do the little spinal. Now a spinal is different from an epidural. The spinal is like instant. Instantly you get um, hot. You get hot. Okay, your whole body get hot. Your legs start doing weird stuff. And you know, the biggest thing with spinals, epidurals, whatever, um, is like, you can get paralyzed. Like anything can happen. They don't want you to move. You have to be so still. So it laid in, I'm just, okay. Sorry, because I'm just like rambling, speaking fast. But this, the whole time I'm talking right now is about Layden. And then I'll get into the second C-section and why I had to have that. So, boom. They throw me in that room. They do the spinal. I'm like so freaking scared. Like, so scared. I have a contraction mid injection okay whole body just like uh and they were like don't move legs jumping wah, 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 whatever okay now i did experience the same like symptoms first c-section as i did with the second meaning like how the anesthesia affected my body um like the shakes and everything is kind of like normal but i didn't really know that so i was scared as hell while i was shivering and with Layden, i was like extremely anemic so i had to get like blood pumped inside of my body as I was getting my c-section so yeah that's what happened with Layden that's why I had to get a c-section with him the first go around Layden came out eight pounds 12 ounces okay he was a big baby my body was like not allowing him to come down okay it was like no we, we not we not going there fast forward to this pregnancy um so like I said I was talking to my OB about why I had to have a c-section with Layden and they kind of suggest that you wait like two years after your first c-section to try to do naturally although I feel like they kind of push more towards if you already had one to have another one because it's like a higher chance that you might tear rupture hemorrhage all this craziness that they tell you and it scares you but me I was so set on I know this is gonna be my last child <laughs> I know this is gonna be my last child y'all so I in my head i was like i want to do and have that experience i didn't have with Layden. like i want that experience i want daddy to be able to deliver the baby like i wanted that whole little oh you know that i didn't get to get with Layden. so when i was talking to my ob at like 20 something weeks he was breaking down the pros and cons of wanting to go a v-back which is vaginal birth after cesareans breaking down the pros and cons of a v-back but he did tell me that like uh, if you want to try it go ahead so since you're so set on wanting to try VBAC let's do it and he was like I'll set a induction like a cesarean for 41 weeks he was like I will leave it at that because I don't want you going past that I really don't want you going past 38 weeks 
but since you want to try to deliver him vaginally like you know i will set this section for 30, 41 weeks if he didn't come by himself then i already had one set that was at like 20 something weeks and I was still set on like, I know I can do it. I was trying everything, you guys. Like the whole little TikToks, raspberry leaf tea. I was drinking raspberry leaf tea from like four, 24 weeks because I love tea in general. So drinking the raspberry leaf tea was nothing for me. I was drinking raspberry leaf tea. I was eating the dates. I was doing the okra water. Y'all seen it? Okay, I was trying everything. Me and Aqua go walk every single day, do curb walks and everything. Like I was trying everything and this little boy was not coming down. I got to like 37 weeks and I really 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 wanted him to be a Gemini like I really wanted him to be a Gemini and I had an appointment my 37 week appointment I went and my OB was telling me like okay the next appointment I'll check your cervix if if it looks good like we do membrane sweep blah 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 so this was 37 weeks and I was like oh yeah like let's do it so my appointment comes the doctor gets stuck at the freaking hospital delivering someone's child I guess one of the nurses or a higher position came in and she did my appointment that day she checked my cervix I was one centimeter dilated but she said like I guess higher was still like hard or thick I don't know how that works so she was like it's still thick um but the outside is like one centimeter that was like 37 weeks so i was like okay cool every appointment i kept getting discouraged like more and more and more my body was just like over it you guys like my third trimester i was so tired like that's why y'all really didn't get no videos okay i was sleep all day like no joke i would sleep all day i was exhausted when i stood up it felt like he was gonna fall out of my vagina and ass at the same time he was huge and heavy we had an appointment scheduled for ultrasound to see how big he was because the doctor was like if he's measuring around the same weight as your first baby your body is not gonna do it he was like i'm sorry to say but i just feel like your body is not gonna do it yeah like in the back of my mind i already knew like i wasn't gonna be able to do it but like i said i wanted to have that experience so i was just hoping and praying and had faith that it will happen so every time he said something or ox said something i was like i ain't even got time to hear what y'all talking about like we gonna get it done okay we're gonna get her done he's gonna come out of my vagina <laughs> my 38 week appointment came and he had checked my cervix and i was still one centimeter okay and I was like, bro, I am over this because I'm trying everything. He feels like he's going to fall out of me. Like, I stood up. It hurt so bad that all I can do is lay down all day. Like, I couldn't even stand up and walk. It hurt so bad. At the 39-week appointment, like, after he was like, you're one centimeter. And I had already been one centimeter for three weeks. Well, for the past two weeks, I was over it, okay? I was like, at this point, take him out of me. And we was already, like, discussing if you can't do it or do you still want to try, la, 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 okay? And I was just like, 38 weeks, I was like, no, like, I think I'm going to try. Like, you know, I have faith. And then my 39-week appointment comes. And at that point, I was just like, yeah, take him out of me. Like, take him out of me. You got it. So we went to that appointment, and I told Ak, like, you know, I am so sorry because this is his first child and I was like I really wanted to give both of us that experience of you know the whole labor and we're having contractions and oh we gotta go to the hospital and uh all the little giddiness that you get of like oh my god my baby is coming and I was just like I'm so sorry but like what do you think I should do like I want to allow both of us to have that experience more so you because i know this is my last kid i was like more so you because like you know this is your first child and aki was just like more so he's concerned about me and my body and how i will handle it so he was just like you know we're still gonna have a baby at the end of the day it doesn't matter how he gets here aki was more so scared about like anything happening when i'm trying to push so he was like i just wanted to be the safest for both of you guys so come around to my 39 week appointment that's when we decided like yeah take him out get him out so they schedule a day which was the 24th of june everyone in my family like it's really weird and i was like i really feel like he's coming because everyone in my family was telling me asking me the baby here the baby here oh my god it's it, today's gonna be the day like random people that i don't even be talking to oh my god is the baby here i'm like bro that means he might be coming like the universe is trying to tell me something oh my god but no i felt bad because we're we know a date and then when everyone starts asking like oh like what's happening are they gonna induce you like are you gonna get a scheduled c-section like what's going on we just have to play along like oh i don't know <laughs> when he get here he get here type shit roll around to the day where 
you know, the 24th. I wasn't allowed to eat anything. But I wasn't allowed to eat eight hours prior to this procedure. And I ate at like seven that morning, drank. I tried to eat a lot too, couldn't. Cause I was just so like ready to meet my baby. The last time I ate or drank, cause they told me I couldn't even drink no water. I was drinking some water. I mean, I wasn't drinking a lot of water, but I was taking some sips. You can't even drink water. And I'm like, okay, so that was seven. I get to the hospital at three. Crazy because we're just walking in there. It's like, you're about to walk in and they're just gonna hand you a baby. We walk in there, you know, no contractions. Although we did have a scare. We did have a scare one day and I was having contractions like every, one to two minutes and it was hurting. They lasted for like two hours and we woke up at like five in the morning and packed our hospital bag like it was crazy. So I guess we kind of did have the experience of like, eh, the baby's coming. But yeah, not so much. Back to what I was talking. He in there washing dishes all loud and shit. Damn. Don't mind him. Clinging and clocking in plates. We walk in with our bags and our little car seats and you know, I'm not experiencing no type of pain, nothing. And we get into the room I have to pee in a cup and I couldn't because I couldn't drink nothing for the past eight hours. So what was y'all expecting out of me? Literally got two drops and I was like, they better work with it. The nurses come in, um, you know, they put the little IV on me to draw my blood, make sure like I'm good on my iron level so they wouldn't have to pump no blood in me. And they put like these little things on my legs, I guess to like circulate the blood while I'm getting a C-section. Also after, um, it like squeezes your legs and like releases to like, you know, so you won't get no clot to whatever. I guess acting like I know, I think that's what it was for. <laughs> And then they come in, they disinfect my belly or whatever. And then she's like, okay, um, your doctor's here. So I guess we're just gonna get going. And I'm like, huh? Because they gave us a specific time of when we were gonna go to the, to the operating room. And she was like, oh, your doctor's here. He's ready to go. So the anesthesiologist is gonna come in and talk to you. And then once they clear you, we're out of here. And I was just like, this is wild. Like it's so much calmer though than the whole emergency, whatever. But it was so much calmer and I kind of liked it, you know, didn't really have to experience no pain and all that. But the one thing I would say, the reason why I really, really, really wanted to try be back was because once I got that spinal with Layden, I would say like three days later, I started having really severely, extremely painful headaches. Like these headaches were like the worst thing I've ever felt in my life to date. Like the worst pain I've ever been in in my life was in headaches. They didn't even compare to contractions, okay? They were worse than contractions. Like I said, them headaches made me, made me never want to have a kid again, okay? Like every time somebody was like, oh, you're gonna have another kid? The only thing I thought about was them headaches. Like I would wake up fully drenched in sweat, head pounding. Like every time my heart would beat, my head would just like boom, boom, boom. Like them headaches were something I can't even explain. So I was just like telling the anesthesiologist this time, like if I get this C-section done, tap my spine. Because the reason why I was having those headaches when I went to the hospital to check on them was because they were saying like, um, I was so anemic that my blood wasn't clotting and my spinal fluids was leaking into my bloodstream, causing me to have a spinal headache. And I'm like, having a kid is a lot. Like we have to go through a lot. So I was like, yeah, no. And back then they were telling me like, if you ever need to do another one or plan to get an epidural, make sure they tap your spine after they're doing they're done doing the spinal or the epidural or whatever so you won't experience these headaches this go around when the anesthesiologist comes in i'm telling him like that's the main thing i'm worried about i don't care y'all can do whatever y'all gotta do tap my spine tap it and they didn't want to tap it they was talking to me like i was dumb like oh that doesn't sound like a spinal I had two anesthesiologists came in and talked to me that doesn't sound like a spinal i'm like hey listen <laughs> Bitch, tap this spine. I don't care if it, if it sound like it. If it don't, all I know is if you're putting that needle in my back, tap it. So then, um, did they tap it? I don't even think they tapped it for real because I started having some headaches. It wasn't bad since my iron level is where it needs to be this go around that my body kind of did it on its own because they weren't trying to tap me. They was just telling me to come back. Like, if I experienced some type of headache to come back to the hospital and I was just over it, okay? So that was already something that was like bad on their end and I already felt like y'all don't even know what y'all doing for real. Was the fact that they wasn't trying to listen to me. Like, why don't people listen to the person whose body it is? Listen to me and do what I said. Like, I don't even care if you think that is logical. Do it. What happened to the customers are always right. <laughs>
the nurse comes in and tells me my doctor is there and we can get ready to go to the operating room okay so i'm like okay cool they position me while i get onto another bed oh actually live um i walked to the operating room which was crazy again um i walked to the operating room or whatever walk in they had Aki like stand outside and there was like windows so he can see me and I was like that's really weird too and I was so nervous because just what I felt and like went through with Layden when they was doing this spinal it was crazy so it was only the anesthesiologist one little doctor in there and then the nurse who was my nurse from the jump when I got to the hospital so I'm just looking around like and I walked in there like damn last time it was like 30 doctors and she was like yeah that's because it was an emergency like this time you know more will come in after we're done prepping you um more nurses and doctors the little team that's gonna be with the baby the team that's gonna be helping stitch me back together and all this and all that so she was like yeah more will come but like right now like you know we don't really need them right now i hop on the table and the nurse try to walk away and i'm like hold on bring it back i'm like hold on come here uh can you hold my hand <laughs> and while i'm saying that you know i ain't got on no clothes just that little gown so you can see all my tattoos like you know i got these but i got a lot more in places you can't see so i have a dragon and some flowers on my back my whole back is done so the anesthesiologist he was pissing me off <laughs> he was pissing me off from jump because he just you know the you know the type that think they funny like you're not funny sir like everything is not sarcastic and like i'm in a real position of anxiety like think about me like stop trying to be funny <laughs> so he was already pissing me off from jump asking the nurse to hold my hand and he was like you can't be scared of this needle you got all these tattoos and then the other doctor was like and she got that big one on her thigh and look it's all that sir shut up with your old ass like we're not talking to you the anesthesiologist was like okay i'm gonna do it so the spinal didn't hurt i think it hurt more last time because i was having contractions mid-injection but the spinal didn't hurt i was holding the nurse's hand my hands were sweaty honey like i had to apologize after because my hands were like wet <laughs> water and so i was holding the little nurse's hand they make you be in a weird position first of all and then he just like relaxed so immediately um last time with Layden, when when she did it it was like uh, i had a female anesthesiologist and as soon as she put that needle in my legs start jumping like this and i'm like she hit something like oh and they were like oh no that's normal and i'm like okay so this go around i was already anticipating my legs start jumping but that didn't happen. I was like, maybe he know what he doing. So he put the little needle on my back. Bada boom, bada bang. Like I said, your whole body will like from chest down instantly get hot, okay? So with Layden, once they did that spinal and laid me down, I was numb, like numb. But I don't know if it was like instantly like I'm remembering or if I was just like so traumatized that my brain trying to block out some of the parts that happened. And I was like really high. Like I don't know why, but like with Layden after the whole procedure, maybe because my body was just exhausted after actually being in active labor for 14 hours. I just felt so high after I had Layden. I don't remember nothing after, okay? Yeah, that was a difference. But with this one, when he injected that thing in my back from the chest down, instantly hot, like warm as hell i just felt the whole body so then like you know i wasn't really overthinking because i'm an overthinker and i have anxiety really bad so with Layden, as soon as my body started getting hot i'm tripping like i'm freaking out like my legs are already jumping my body getting hot you done hit something and now i'm paralyzed oh my god that's what i was thinking <laughs> so this go around they talked me through the whole thing told me what to expect what i was gonna feel and all this and all that so that was a little better for for my um mental so they laid me down on the table after they did it body got hot and now we're waiting like three minutes because i wasn't up <laughs> my doctor had walked in my ob he had walked in and i started seeing more doctors walk in and i'm just like oh my god what you're not gonna do is try to cut me open and i can still feel everything so i'm like moving my toes and i'm like telling them like excuse me child like i'm i can still move my legs and she's like oh yeah like you know once we're done prepping you then you should be numb and i'm like okay now if you never had a c-section you're numb but you can literally feel everything like you can feel them inside of you you can feel them tugging and pulling you can feel them pushing and priding like it's the weirdest feeling in the world because you can't feel pain 
but you can feel them inside your body like it's weird i'm not numb and then my doctor came in and he's like oh like you know after we're done prepping you like you should be numb and i'm like okay cool so they make you like lay like this out on the bed like you jesus you have a little blue thing in front of you and then they call Akin or whatever i guess after they're done prepping me they want to make sure that i am numb so i guess he had did something a little bit and he was like so how was that and i couldn't feel it so he was like okay we're good and then the anesthesiologist was right here on my shoulder whole time on his phone first of all but he was over here on my shoulder he was like but i was like but i can kind of still move my toes and he was like but if you were able to feel what he was just doing like you would be in severe pain like he was just pulling on you hard and i was like oh okay he was like yeah but you're numb they started the procedure now they went over the same scar that i already have which I was very much so like, are y'all gonna go in the same spot? If you're not, then I'm gonna let my baby come out however you wanna come out. <laughs> he can come out the ass, okay? But I was just like, if y'all not going in the same spot, don't even touch me. Because my little uh, OB in Anaheim, she did amazing, okay? Like I can wear thong bikinis, everything, and you cannot see my scar. Like it was low and small, and I'm like, oh. And he was like, no, I'm gonna go over the same scar. So they had to like, um, he said he like burnt the old one off. I guess and me and ox smelt that and i was really scared like it smelled really bad like burning skin disgusting he had did that or whatever and then they started the procedure it was telling ox like the anesthesiologist was like having him sit down behind the thing as they were like you know cutting through the layers or whatever and he was like when they start pulling him out like they end up and look and i was like wait what and he was like you take pictures and everything like just don't take video so i'm like what so i has pictures of like my stomach open and like them pulling the baby it was disgusting them pulling the baby out or whatever but he like stood up and watched meanwhile they like pulling him out and trying to cut me open my fucking hand is doing one of these my fingers are doing one of these and I can't like this literally like this and I can't control it like my hand is straight like this and I'm like is this normal like no way you done hit me with this in my spinal now you causing my arm to be paralyzed so I'm just sitting here like bro I'm asking the anesthesiologist like I said he's sitting over my shoulder but he's on his cellular device so I'm like is this normal like my I can't control my hand it's like this I'm like I can't control my hand he was like trying to be fucking funny like he kept pissing me off because I'm like is this normal he's like you're okay you'll be fine you're brave you got it and he was like let's just hope it doesn't get stuck like that forever I'm like sir I had to tell him because I was like I'm really not playing like I have anxiety <laughs> I think when he realized like I was like really scared he was like okay like no it's okay it's just because the um, anesthesia could sometimes travel up a little bit into your arm and that's what's happening he was like it's completely normal you're fine but he kept trying to make jokes and I'm like sir this is not the time to joke because as they seen my blood pressure kept rising <laughs> my blood pressure kept rising because I was okay yeah after he told me like i was gonna be fine and he's the professional i just had to kind of believe him although i really didn't believe him i just had to believe him and i kept trying to like <sighs> calm my nerves and take deep breaths and just wait to hear my baby cry i kept just trying to take deep breaths and like everything is normal everything is okay that's all i kept telling myself in my head like everything is normal everything is okay and then I pulled my baby out and i heard him cry and i started crying and i told Ak to like go over there with him and make sure he got all his fingers in his toes count everything make sure he's okay so they was like wiping him off and everything Ak's like baby's okay i'm like bring up to me because with Layden, they like wiped him down real fast and just brought him like and put him on me and like and I'm like, why y'all taking so long with my baby? Like, bring him to me. Like, if he's okay, what are y'all doing? So I carry him over to me, like, put him on me, but it was so cute. And then they started stitching me up or whatever, y'all. They're like pulling and tugging and stitching and priding. I'm literally like, oh, like, ow. And they laugh and think this shit is so funny. And I'm like, literally, it just hurt. I'm trying to tell y'all, like, ew. I'm like, ugh, hurry up. <laughs> but I'm like saying my doctor name, but he like you're okay that you're like it's okay And I'm like it's not okay like hurry up that happened They stitched me up and then they rolled us back to the room that we were in to begin with to do our little um, Hour post-op watching I guess I don't know to see how we're recovering and once you get a c-section They have to come in and like push down on your stomach So you won't hemorrhage or anything and that shit hurts so bad So they were like push down on your stomach for the first like 24 hours the first like hour and a half They will come in like every 15 minutes and push 
hard as shit on my stomach and then you know over that they would come in every 30 minutes so like the first day you really don't get no sleep because they were coming in like every 30 minutes pushing on my stomach yeah my little shakes lasted for like three hours them was scaring me too and what really scared me y'all okay so i guess she was trying to like calm me down because they couldn't get a really like precise blood pressure on me because i was shaking so much she told me to count backwards the nurse she she told me to count backwards from a hundred she said count down from a hundred to one but in every fours i i was my brain couldn't process what she was saying so she was like count down so you say a hundred and then you know 99 98 97 96 so she wants you to say a hundred 96 then minus four then that number and y'all <laughs> I thought I was having a stroke I thought I was having a stroke, but she was just trying to get my mind off of shaking so they could take my blood pressure, which was a really nice um, distraction, but she made me feel like I was having a stroke. And then I got scared her and my blood pressure skyrocketed because I was scared because I couldn't do it. Like, I couldn't figure out the numbers. I was saying like 100, 97, 98, 98. She was like the other way. And I was like, what? She was like, what comes after 98? And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. I'm having a stroke. It was really bad. Like, it was really bad. I was trying to help me, and it was just really bad. And I thought I was having a stroke. So, yeah, after she did that and told me, like, you know, it's always hard. Um, Yeah, my mind was at ease. What I would say about this one was if you are scared to be induced for a C-section, don't be. It's really smooth, and it's very calming. I feel like it's kind of better. Like, you're not experiencing the pain, your body's not going through all this stress. Um, although they said like, you know, a C-section healing process is worse and longer than if you vaginally deliver. I feel like maybe it's just my body. I don't know, because even like people are still surprised this go around that I'm able to like get up and move and run um maybe I'm not supposed to be doing all that but like I feel like I'm okay um like right now I can get up and twerk if I wanted to <laughs> but yeah um it's been almost two weeks since I had him stomach is back on flat flat okay proud of that but I'm not able to like um work out or anything yet um because I do still have a scar I'm waiting to see what my scar looks like. Y'all will see the whole little process of all that and stuff in a different video. But um, I'm just waiting to see what it looks like. Right now it's still like bandage. I'm not allowed to take that off until tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow. Baby's almost two weeks. He's thriving and surviving. Big. He getting a little chunky. I'm great, like I said. I'm really great. The only thing wrong is like I'm tired, you know, sleep deprived. I, we have a newborn. Gonna happen. But as we sleep right now, I'm very tired. Like. I am extremely sleepy, but I was like, let me just film a video for y'all. Like, I can't go MIA. I also about labor and delivery. Oh, yeah, like I was saying, if you have to be induced for or scheduled C-section, don't be scared. Like, it's very calming. Your body is not in shock and distress, not traumatic experience. Like, it's very relaxing. You walk in there, you get your baby. You might not be able to walk back out, but you'll get there. I walked back out, so you got it. 10 out of 10 experience. Mm, 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 experience. Would I do it again? Hell no. Do I want to do it again? Hell no. Am I going to do it again? Hell no. I'm happy with my two kids, okay? Got two kids. That's crazy to say. It's coming from me. And everybody in my family know coming from me. Having two kids, wild. Having one kid was surprising, shocking. Two of them? <laughs> but I got two done, okay? But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If I left anything out, if you have some questions, comment down below. Any questions, comment below and I'll try to answer them. If I left out anything and you're wondering, comment below. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you get a big thumbs up. If you made it this far, you're not yet subscribed. What? Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. They are down below. And on that note, Bye.